How are you doing? I'm good. Well, good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. And uh, I can tell it's summer. <laughs> but I tell you, I like those clouds out, clouds out there this morning. And uh, at least it makes you feel like it might rain, even if it doesn't. But it's good to see you this morning. And we welcome you. Uh, Carl and Sarah and the family are away at a baptism for one of their family members this morning. So I'm going to do announcements it's good to see everyone. Uh, our life group too, reading through the Bible. We're going to meet this evening at 5 p.m. So join with us. Anyone can come to that. Join with us in the activity building at 5. Missionary service. Uh, next Sunday evening, we are going to have missionary Eileen Ruger with us. She is missionary to the Philippines. And she will be with us. We're going to meet in the activity building at 5 p.m. Bring finger foods, and we will take a deputation offering for them as well. Spring Lake t-shirts, uh, Sarah's not here, but uh, she was hoping to have the money turned in for the t-shirts today. But if you could get that to her Wednesday or next Sunday. Our back-to-school blessing outreach we're going to have a back-to-school event starting on August 6th, and we are collecting school supplies. There's a tub in the foyer, the Sunday school foyer I saw where items have already been placed in there. If you look at your email, uh, there's a list of things that are, are needed, or I can make you a copy after the service. If you'd like a copy, there's uh, certain kind of markers or crayons or glue sticks, and we're going to uh, hand those out. As, and we'll tell you more about the August 6th event. We'll need volunteers that day to help with food. And we'll set up uh, uh, games for them outside. So it'll be a great time to outreach to our community. Our, um, just a reminder on giving. We appreciate. We know people travel during the summer. But just ask you to remember our church in that time of giving. Well, Trey, would you lead us in song? All right, good morning, Spring Lake. If we will, please stand with me as we worship this morning. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter. My all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of life and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on Him was made. Here in the death of Christ, I live. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ.
my mother's womb, you have chosen me, love has called my name, I've been born again into your family, your love flows through my veins, I'm no longer a slave. child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing, I am a child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing, I am a child Oh, I am a child of God. Yes, I am a child of God. Oh, I am a child of God. Can we sing that one more time? And so no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Thank you so much. Trey said that... Uh, Give me oil. My lamp was a new one, but not for everybody. <laughs> I told him there will be a lot in here that know that song. And uh, I saw that, and I go, we have, I have not heard that song in a long time. We've got to sing that one. I've always liked that one. And, uh, well, the teens had uh, a busy weekend. Sarah Goss met with the girls as they completed their their study that they were doing. They had a lock in Friday, and then the Dodsons invited them over for another uh, session of learning the bow and arrow. Thank you uh, uh, to the Dodsons for inviting them over. I hear it was a little warm, though, <laughs> but uh, it's a little warm for all of us, isn't it? We're going to dismiss our children to God's big backyard at this time. At the uh, end of the service, we're going to have our teen campers are going to be going to camp this week. So we're going to have those that are going that are here come forward. We're going to pray for them that God just makes it really special. And traveling mercies for Casey as she takes them there and picks them up. And just ask God to be, be there and meet with them as he did our children. That's always so important. Well, John was an astronaut scheduled to fly on the first mission to the International Space Station. And the media frenzy surrounding the event uh, was maddening for him. Everywhere he went, no matter where he was, the media was following him. At work, at home, at the store, they'd stay outside of his house and set up cameras. And he just couldn't get peace anywhere. And it wasn't just the media, it was his own family and friends. They wanted to see him and be around him as much as they could before he went up. So he, he just had no time alone as he was preparing for the launch. And uh, he, he liked solitary times, and it began to affect him physically. In fact, it, it started to stress him out so much that he couldn't get time alone that... Uh, NASA became concerned whether he could carry out the mission. 
as uh, his heart rate and and uh, mental outlook was being affected by it. So, uh, but they finally decided. He said, "I can do this." So they decided to. And um, John, uh, his heart was beating dangerously fast as he walked towards the craft, and got strapped in and went up. And however, as soon as they were out of the Earth's atmosphere, he calmed down and became completely normal. Turns out all he needed was a little space. (laughs) Have you ever felt like you needed a little space? (laughs) Uh, Parrots? (laughs) Ever felt like you needed a little space? I could ask the kids the same thing. Kids, ever feel like you need a little space? Uh, We're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit called peace this morning. And uh, peace, peace brings to mind several images when we think about it. A handshake between two enemies or a treaty. The laying down of arms. A sunset on a quiet beach. Or the lack of of disturbances, or the freedom from strife and worry. Uh, Peace has been the goal of nations that have fought wars over it. And there have been treaties made time and time again, uh, hopefully to ensure peace, but yet so many times those treaties are broken and very short-lived. It seems that everyone wants peace, and yet so few ever find it. And Galatians 5.22 is going to share with us the good news that we can have peace. And this peace is not defined as we normally would think of peace. This peace is a fruit of the Spirit. And as we've been talking about the fruits of the Spirit, that means that as we talked about the vine and the branch last Sunday, there is a, a the Holy Spirit that's going through us like a vine that goes through the branches. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, the Holy Spirit starts bringing fruit out of our lives that's not of ourselves. It comes supernaturally from God. And one of those uh, is peace. And I want you to stand with me once again as we look at Galatians 5.22. And I invite you to read this scripture with me. Let's, let's read this together as we go through this. We've been, we're now in our third message on this. But let's read it together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your people that have gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the fruit that comes into our lives as we allow your Holy Spirit to fill us and move through us. And Lord, our world needs peace today. We need peace today, the peace of God. And I pray that this would would relieve burdens that some may be carrying this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. Christian speaker and author Carolyn Newell recently wrote, she said, I still can't believe the calmness that surrounded me that summer night six years ago. My husband woke me up and said, I can't breathe. I I rushed into action as as if I had done this before. I called 911 and prayed. Paramedics worked on my husband as I made phone calls seeking prayer warriors. At the hospital, they administered a breathing treatment, and the doctor diagnosed him with a flash form of congestive heart failure. Lifestyle and dietary changes prevented future episodes. If you know me, you would know that staying cool in the emergency situation falls far beyond my typical nature. You see, Carolyn is testifying that there was a peace that came from God in the midst of a very 
uh, difficult situation. It was an assurance of God's control in the midst of the circumstance that, that is, was a part of her life, God's control as a result of her obedience to him. It was a peace that calmed her heart. And it is a peace that every one of us can experience as well. There's a passage in Isaiah 48, 18, in which the Lord tells us what his desire is to do for each and every one of us. I want you to look at this closely. He was speaking to Israel, and we know Israel had a problem of disobedience to God. They would not obey his word. He gave them so many promises, if you'll just obey me. But look at verse 18. It says, if only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. Now that's something, when you say, when God says, I want to give you peace like a river and uh, well-being like the waves of the sea. And that is exactly the type of peace that Carolyn wrote about, testified to. It's the peace we can possess as a result of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Even if you're saved, you know what? Even if we're saved, <laughs> we still need peace. Because guess what? Even the upright can get uptight. And if we're not careful, we let that uptightness go into anxiety and fear all too many times. You can have peace, overflowing, river-like peace, like the waves of the sea. That's a promise from God. And, th and that's what I want every one of us to find in our hearts today. Because as our world is going through what it is going through, you do not have to be living in fear. You do not have to be living in anxiety. Angela Wiki, I'm gonna, you sent a song. I forget what the song was. You said, in these times we're living in, this... Yeah, same God. Yes, it was so powerful. Go ahead. Oh, it is. It talked about the same God that did the miracles that we read about in the Bible. He hasn't changed. He's still the same today as he was then, and he can still work in our lives just as he did in all the lives of the people we read about in Scripture. And, uh, and that's the peace that the Holy Spirit wants to give us. So in the fourth chapter of Philippians, Paul writes that the peace of God can, can transcend literally our understanding. And it will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Now that's quite a promise. And God's promises are always true. So let's take a closer look at the steps that Paul tells us to take to allow the Holy Spirit to produce peace in our hearts. And the first one is most surprising as it is the complete opposite of what we usually do during times of stress. And that is to rejoice in the Lord always. You see, Philippians 4.4 4 begins with this. And it says in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Now Paul's prescription for peace in the midst of the storm begins with joyful thankfulness for who God is and what he has done in our life. When your focus is on the Lord, you see, you, you give thanks to Him. And when you give thanks to the Lord, He gives you the peace of the Lord. Strange, isn't it? Uh, Isaiah 26.3 says, You'll keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. Corey Ten Boom wrote, when I look at the world, I get distressed. 
When I look at myself, I get depressed. When I look at Jesus, I am at rest. That's exactly what Paul is saying here. Going back to the descriptions of peace that I gave earlier, one of them is the lack of disturbance. And I want to let you know a little secret on peace. Peace is not an absence of problems. Peace calms the heart in the presence of Jesus in the midst of our problems. You see, you cannot always rejoice in your problems, but you can rejoice in the Lord. And when Paul wrote this, he was in prison. Think of this. He was in prison. And he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. How could he write that? He knew that he was possibly facing a Roman death. Yet he was at peace because his focus was on the Lord. What an example for us. Now, Paul realized there were three things he could rejoice in no matter what circumstance he was facing. First of all, he could rejoice in the grace of God that saved him. Every one of us can rejoice that God has saved us. If you know Him as your personal Savior, God's love reached down to you, touched your heart, called you to repentance. You gave your life to Him and He forgave you and has given you eternal life. Every one of us can thank God for that every day. Secondly, He could rejoice in the goodness of God that secured Him. You see, Scripture tells us that once you become a child of God, you're in His hands and He doesn't let go of you. If you know Jesus Christ, if you're remaining obedient to Him, even in those circumstances that are happening, He is still holding you in His hands. You're secure in the hands of God. And thirdly, He could rejoice in the glory of God that surrounded him. He wasn't alone. And one of the things that you hear people testify to, that in the most difficult situations, when they begin to thank God for who he is and what he has done, they sense his presence about them. And it's like a shield. It's like a guard around them. And Paul knew he could... At least thank God for those three things. And there was a whole lot more Paul could thank him for as we can as well. Now notice also, Paul says he speaks about the season of rejoicing. Not only are we to rejoice in the Lord in those tough times so that we get our focus off the problem and on Jesus, but he says rejoice in the Lord always. That means winter, fall, spring, uh, winter, fall, spring, summer, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. When it's hot, when it's cold, when it's dry, and when it's wet. When things are good and when things are bad, we're to rejoice in the Lord. Do you want God's peace in the midst of your life? All the time? Within all the time, we need to first focus on the Lord. Rejoice in Him. It's amazing what it does when you take your focus off the problem and you look to Jesus and you give Him thanks. And God's Holy Spirit just begins to warm your heart and you feel like you're being lifted out of the earthly into the heavenly. You're in another realm. And all of a sudden, those problems begin to look smaller. You've done nothing but focus on Jesus, but God has taken you and assured you that He's with you, and the Holy Spirit has bathed your heart in peace. It makes a difference when we rejoice in the Lord. Peace that calms the heart comes from rejoicing. In the love of Jesus. Well, Paul goes on. 
He says, if you want to experience this peace of the Holy Spirit, rejoice in the Lord. Don't let the, the world make you a curmudgeon, a worry wart, a critical spirit. Be thankful in the Lord first. And secondly, Paul says, pray. Pray about every situation. Let's look at verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now, I like the message paraphrase of this verse. I think it explains it so well. I, I think it'd be great if you took this and cut it out and put it in your Bible and whenever you start to feel worry coming upon your heart, you grab it out and you read it. And, and listen to how the message explains it. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces, displaces worry at the center of your life. If anything brings concern to your heart, it's time to pray about it. Why? Because when we pray, the Holy Spirit unites with our spirit and brings peace. God's Presence through the Holy Spirit brings peace that calms us and gives us assurance. You know what? A calm heart sure beats an anxious heart any day. Too many times we disregard Paul's words to pray. Let's be honest. Some Christians pray about nothing. Other Christians pray about some things. But not often. God says, pray about everything. I heard about a woman in her early 30s who was not married. And then she got saved. And she decided that she was going to pray for a Christian husband. And every night she'd hang a, a pair of men's trousers on the bedroom door. And go and kneel and pray this prayer. Father in heaven, hear my prayer. And grant if you can, I've hung a pair of trousers here. Please fill them with a man. <laughs> That's great. And yes, if you're here and you're not married, you should be praying for the Lord to provide you with a Christian spouse. That, no matter how young you are, be praying for God to prepare the heart of whoever he you meet that's going to be your spouse. Prepare their heart to grow in the Lord and just have you meet a godly spouse. How many of you are loaded down with burdens and cares and worries today and have no peace? Take it to the Lord in prayer. There's a that, that old hymn that we sing and it speaks so much truth. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. It's amazing how you can be facing a situation and be so anxious about it and your heart is distressing and when you will settle down and just Breathe and say, take it to the Lord in prayer, how calmness comes so quickly. I was uh, reading the testimony of Charles Swindoll, and I think it really speaks of what God can do in our hearts if we rejoice in Him and if we take Time to pray about the situations in our life. He said some years ago his phone rang in the middle of the day on a Friday. And it was 
someone from her, his older daughter's school telling him that Carissa had been in an accident. She had been practicing a pyramid formation with her cheerleading squad when someone at the bottom slipped and it caused the whole human pyramid to come down. Carissa was at the top and she fell the farthest and hit the back of her head with a really sharp jolt. And her leg and her arms were, were numb. She could not move them. She couldn't even move her fingers. After notifying the paramedics, the school officials called Charles. And his wife, Cynthia, was away at the time, so he raced to the school alone, not knowing what he'd find, how serious the, his daughter had been injured. En route, he prayed aloud and he called out to the Lord like a child trapped in an empty well, he said. And he told him that he needed him. And he needed him specifically in several different ways. One, to touch his daughter. And then to give him strength. He asked the Lord to provide skill and wisdom to the paramedics. And then he said, Lord, I ask you to calm me to restrain this growing sense of panic that's in my heart right now. And he said as he drove and prayed, he sensed the most incredible realization of God's presence. He said it was almost eerie. The pulse and the thumping of his heart returned to normal. And when he reached the school parking lot and he saw all the lights flashing uh, on the emergency Vehicles, he said, it, it didn't phase my sense of calm. It remained. He ran to where the crowd had gathered, and by that time, the paramedics had Carissa wrapped tightly on a stretcher, and her neck was in a brace. And he knelt beside her, and he kissed her on the forehead, and he heard her say, Dad, I can't feel anything below my shoulders. Something snapped in my back just below my neck and she was blinking through tears. And he said, normally I would have been out of control, I, I, but he wasn't. He said, normally I would have been shouting for the crowd to get back so the paramedics could get her to the hospital as quick as possible, but I didn't. And he said, the calmness came and I stroked her hair from her eyes and whispered, I'm here with you, sweetheart. So is our Lord. And no matter what happens, we're going to make it through this together. I love you. And the tears just ran, ran down the side of his face as he said that to her. And calmly, he said, I stood there, talked with the emergency personnel. We agreed on the hospital, the route that they were going to take. And he followed in his car, and again he said he just sensed the Spirit's profound and sovereign presence. Um, her, uh, his wife rushed to the scene, and uh, she wasn't that far away, but wasn't where she could go with him. And they met at the hospital where they waited for the x-rays and the radiologist report, and they prayed, and... He told his wife of his encounter with the Holy Spirit and the calmness that the Lord had given him. In a few hours, they learned that her vertebrae in Chris's back had been fractured. The doctors did not know how much damage had been done to the nerves as a result of the fall. They also did not know how long it would take for the numbness to subside or if it ever would. And he could tell they were very guarded with their words. And uh, they had nothing tangible to rely on, nothing medical to count on, and nothing emotional to lean on except the Spirit of God who stayed with them through that entire ordeal. 
Sunday was just around the corner. It always is for a pastor. <laughs> and uh, he was exhausted by Saturday night. But again, God's spirit, he said, remained my stability. He preached on Sunday morning. The Lord gave him the words. And he proved his strength through his weakness. And he was, he, he said that of all the tapes that have been sold of my sermons, that message remains one of the most requested sermons that I've ever preached after that happened, that Sunday. Amazing. God, the Holy Spirit, filled him, took full control, gave great grace, calmed his fears, and ultimately brought wonderful healing to their daughter, Carissa. Uh, today, she's healthy, a happy wife, and mother of two, and he says the only time that her back hurts is when she sneezes. <laughs> He says, every time she sneezes, I'll look over at her lovingly and ask her, did that hurt? And she'll smile back and say, yes, it did. And for a moment, they'll return to that original scene where he felt the real awareness of the Spirit's presence. That's a testimony of what God does with the fruit of the Spirit of peace. And it is available for anyone, every child of God, if we let the Holy Spirit give us calmness in the midst of our circumstances. Well, Paul says, if you want peace, rejoice in the Lord. And then take everything to Him in prayer. That's what Charles did on the way to his daughter. And thirdly, I like this the best. Paul says, let Christ guard your heart. When your heart is filled with praise and your mind is filled with prayer, then your soul will be filled with peace. What happens when you rejoice in the Lord? What happens when you take all your concerns to God in prayer? Well, Paul says in verse 7, The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the middle of a great battle, a general was wounded and lay dying on the battlefield surrounded by his aides, and he began to cry out desperately, give it to me, give it to me. And one of his aides said, General, we will give you anything you ask. What is it that you want? And he po pointed to another soldier that was dying underneath a tree not far from him. And he said, I would give 10,000 worlds to have what that soldier Soldier told me he had last night. And they rushed over to that soldier and they said, the general says you, you told him you had something last night and he wants it. What is it? And with his last breath, the soldier said, a peace that passes all understanding. You can have that peace in Christ. Yet I want you to know and even more importantly, that God's peace is also your protection. Now, Charles Swindoll gave the testimony of the protection the Holy Spirit gave him in the midst of that crisis with his daughter. The Holy Spirit, Paul says, guards our hearts and minds. Now that word guard, of course, it's referring to a garrison of soldiers that are charged with the responsibility of defending the city. And God's peace is like a guard patrolling before our heart. In, in, in other words, God's peace not only calms us, but God's peace puts soldiers <laughs> 
and centuries around our feelings and our thoughts to protect them from worry and to keep us centered on God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there as a guard to warn you when worry wants to open the door of your heart and come in. And you can immediately turn to God in prayer and allow God to protect your heart and mind or you can open the door to anxiousness and fill your heart with it. But the Holy Spirit is ready to act if you'll turn to God and say, Lord, this worry is trying to warm its way in. You're my guard. You're my protection. And you pray and give the situation to God. A guard of your heart. That's what Paul says is our peace, the fruit of the Spirit. We rejoice in the Lord. We always give thanks to Him. We take everything to God in prayer, no matter how small or large. And then we rely on the Holy Spirit to be our guard, our protection, to keep out all those those worries and doubts and fears that want to flood into your soul. One day I was on a ski slope in New Mexico. We had taken the youth group there to go skiing. And uh, the last day the snow was just coming down beautifully in the mountains. And I happened to be on a slope all by myself. I don't know how it's possible. I think a lot of people were leaving because the snow was coming down so hard. It was the most beautiful scene in the world. And to know I was the only one there for a moment. And as I looked at the majesty of God's creation, what a peace came to me. I can't tell you what it was. I just know it transcends all earthly understanding. I didn't want to leave, and I just soaked it in. And that same peace came to me when I received a phone call from my doctor telling me that I had cancer. And I remember going to Carti for the first time for blood test, and I walked into that huge building, and it was just overwhelming, and I looked at the many people, and I could see what the ravages of, of their treatments was doing to them. And I want to tell you something. I did let fear come in. And I was going, God, I don't want to go through this. But the next day, I committed it all to God. And he made himself just as real then as he did on that ski slope. It was a peace that transcends all understanding. And it flooded my soul. And I don't know how to tell you what it is. I can only say it comes from God alone. And it's real. And I continue to praise God for his healing. Everybody is looking for peace. And most people are looking every place but in the right place. Some people are trying to find it in pills. Others are trying to find it in pleasure. Many are trying to find it in possessions. But my friend, real peace is only found in a person, and his name is Jesus. If you want real peace, eternal peace, everlasting peace, so you can keep your head when everyone around you is losing theirs, come to the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus. Trey, would you come? I think this morning and 
instead of just inviting everyone to come, I just want to open the altar to any that's felt God's Spirit speaking to them and would like to come and pray. Uh, let's stand as Trey is preparing to... Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord, we, we know that there is a peace that surpasses all understanding. And we know it's from you. And God, I believe there's some here today that, that need reassurance of your presence. And they want to open their heart to the peace that you give. And I just pray that, Lord, they would find it this morning. They'd just come down in prayer and just ask as you directed us to take it to the Lord in prayer. So I just invite you now, if anyone would like to come, if there's a burden you've been carrying, and you just want to take it to God in prayer, what a wonderful place to do it is right here. Would you come now? Just Turn over that burden to the Lord and ask for his peace. Now, would you come? about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus it's, uh, you may be seated as these around the altar are praying if you'd like Praise the Lord. 
thank the Lord for those who have been encouraged and uplifted this morning. I pray all of you will leave this sanctuary sensing the peace of the Lord. I would like the campers that are present and Casey to come down. Uh, those that will be going to teen camp, would you come down? We want to pray for you. I know Chloe's out with the God's big backyard. But we want those that are going to camp, we want to pray that God moves wonderfully at camp. He does that in such a beautiful way. Ask that you would remember James Williams in your prayers in a special way. He has been moved to the rehab and um, at Sheridan at this time. Yes, Chloe, come on. Thank you. And uh, we want to ask you to keep praying for my uh, mother-in-law. Carrie is with her now. They've gone through the first week at home and just help that her mother will adjust and uh, just bring blessing on her. How is Larry Jr. doing? He's better. Let's we'll lift him up in prayer. Let's bow our heads in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we do come to you and thank you for your presence this morning. I pray that you would be with uh, uh, those physical needs and those families that have been grieving. We have physical needs in our church body, and we have those that are grieving. And we pray you go to each and every one. We especially pray you go become close to James Williams. You know how ill he's been, and uh, now he's in a situation that is very foreign to him, and we just pray you give him your peace and help and your will be done. Remember, Lord, uh, Betty Mullins, and I pray you just help her in this adjudgment. We think of our church plants around the district, that you'd bless them and all our churches. We pray it around the world. And God, I pray that you'd be with our campers. Thank you for Casey taking them. Give them a safe journey there and back. And uh, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fall mightily in every devotion, in every meeting they have. And I pray they'd make great friendships, godly friendships. And Lord, it'd be another wonderful camp where they just have wonderful memories of how you drew close to them. And we just ask this in your most precious holy name. May... The God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You are dismissed. Our offering plates are in the back of the forest.